27 degrees Celsius, early June here in Japan. This is what our garden used to look like and over the last few years this is the work we've done. It's not complete yet but I'll just show you in this update where we're at and what I'm planning with this section of the garden. So you can see that the garden's come quite a long way. I'll cover the lawn a bit later in this video, but first let's have a closer look at the flower beds as of today. The idea behind this border here is to make it a little bit more Western style, but using plants and flowers that are typical to Japan, such as azaleas, hydrangeas, but a spirea there. And here, although it's not flowering, this is a shibasakura, or moss flocks. I'll show you a bit more about that later. So if you come down here, this end has more overseas and foreign flowers and plants, such as the black-eyed Susans, the lavender, rosemary, and cone flowers as well. This way we've just got our little veggie garden with the strawberries and what have we got here these are potatoes yep potatoes what are you growing down here cucumber cucumber and okra okra and okay and then uh, eggplant eggplant okay so my wife's looking after this garden i actually haven't got that involved in it and the kids have been helping her too so this kind of section here is mostly Japanese plants and flowers. I, I haven't done it. I'm not going to manicure it in a, a kind of, you know, neat, tidy Japanese style way. I don't really have the time for that and kind of think it works. I like how it is. So we've got um, the ume, the plum, we've got azaleas, hydrangeas. We have the uh, tsubaki, which is the camellia, and we have some more uh, uh, flocks here. And yeah, you can see that is growing pretty well now. It's well established. So yeah, if you compare that to the previous and old videos of when I was planting this, I think they're doing pretty well. There's quite a battle against caterpillars here though, but um, they're they're doing okay. And here, the Japanese maple, the Acer, uh, is, is growing really nicely too. If you've ever been to Japan in early spring, you might have seen the meadows of Shibazakura, which literally means lawn cherry blossoms. Though the Japanese flocks to see them, it is not actually a native Japanese plant. 
I planted some last year and it does well in the climate where we live. It's an excellent ground cover that spreads slowly and is effective against weeds. So I've decided to go for it and cover this whole bed eventually, or as much as possible, in a blanket of Shibazakura before the hydrangea and perennials return and to really get Japanese visitors and passers-by all excited. I took some cuttings to plant in autumn this year. I should really have done this after flowering, but I felt like doing it anyway. Though, if I'm going to cover the whole bed, I will need a lot more plugs, so it's going to take a few years, I reckon. I found this grinder in one of the sheds when we bought the house. It's been pretty handy. Since Shibazakura flowers on new growth, you're supposed to trim it after it's finished flowering to get more flowers the following year. I planted the cuttings directly into the soil, a bit lazy, but we'll see how it goes. Meanwhile, the cuttings in the trays are growing very nicely. I want to use Shiba Zakura as ground cover all over this bed too. Using cuttings saves a lot of money, especially considering how many plugs we'll need. I've done the same with the hydrangea. It's really easy to propagate. I've only ever bought one plant, my mother-in-law also gave me one, and the rest I've just used cuttings from existing plants and neighbours plants, with permission of course. Apart from the two big ones, the other hydrangea were from cuttings I did last spring. We've received a lot of plants from friends and my mother-in-law's house, such as this bearded iris and this lavender. I'm happy to see we're getting plenty of pollinators visiting. At some point I'd like to keep a beehive.
The satsuki that I planted last year died because I didn't water them over summer. And also I'm not sure that the soil is really conducive to its growth. But I'm going to try again. The problem is that azalea like acidic soil and the soil here looks slightly alkaline. So I'm adding some of this sulfur that we found in the sheds. We'll see how they go, but to be honest they were pretty cheap, about 500 yen each from the local home centre. We've had a few problems with growing the lawn here, mostly over summer due to the heat and humidity. We didn't have insect problems last year, thankfully. Last year I planted a new supposedly stronger seed, so we'll see how it goes. This main paddock gets worn down quickly and doesn't get much of a chance to recover, especially in front of the golds. 
Aerating a lawn this size is a bit of a problem as you can't rent machine aerators from home centers here in Japan as not many people have lawns this large. So I needed to do it manually, which is not much fun. I try to do just a little bit each day. According to Japanese lawn care YouTube channels, you want to have it aerated before the rainy season, which looks like it's coming very soon. I don't use a lot of fertilizer as I don't think it needs it. I mulch the grass cuttings back in and in autumn I mulch a lot of the fallen leaves in too. But when I do use fertilizer I usually use this organic one. I find it helpful to turn things on before trying to start them. This is abandoned farmland. I take it in turns with my neighbour to cut the weeds.
Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.